I mean, because we've, we value our relationship with Mexico as being very important. It's our biggest soybean market. It is also the biggest poultry market from, for us going, moving products south. And there's just a lot of reasons why we need to work so closely with uh, the, our Mexican counterparts. Hello, me folks. Welcome back to the Mispa Podcast. Today we continue uh, with this entire week at K-State with the Mexican Meat Science Short Course. And so it's a week where we talk about beef fabrication, pork fabrication, and also poultry fabrication and poultry processing. And today it's our honor and our pleasure to have Dennis Hoopy, Director of Field Services at Kansas Soybean Commission. Welcome, Dennis. Well, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to sit down and have a conversation. Absolutely. I think um, we can start off by by asking you about your role. What do you do for um, for the Kansas Soybean Commission and, and some of uh, the objectives uh, within your role? Well, my role was created because the Kansas Soybean Commissioners, which is a group of nine farmers that are elected across the state to determine how the soybean checkoff is used. And these nine commissioners, back when I was hired, wanted more visibility of what they were doing with the checkoff money. Because one half of 1% of every bushel that is sold in this country, there's an assessment against it of one half of 1%. And so a $10 bushel of soybeans, there's five cents. Well, half of that five cents goes to the United Soybean Board for larger projects, but the other half stays in the state of Kansas. And so that two and a half cents, then the commissioners get various projects that are brought to them for funding. And Peak happened to be one of the projects that applied for funds and uh, membership. And so that's how we became interested in not only what the commission can do to better the use of their checkoff funds, because by working with firms such as Peak, uh, USMEF, groups like that, we're talking value added to the soybean farmer instead of just the raw bean going somewhere to be processed and used it is processed and used in this country and then the meat is exported and so that's why they created the role they needed somebody out i mean we are involved in all sorts of projects all the way from as again use peak to uh, north central soybean research projects which is 13 states that get together to pool money to work on bigger pro- problems in soybean production diseases, um, weather, things like that. So it's it's a great role because I get to change what I do about every day or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it's a great uh, job that I have, and uh, we really try to get what the checkoff does in front of the farmer that pays that checkoff. Absolutely, and I, and I think it, we we thank you for that and all your your support. Um, to Anatif, uh, to use a peak and to, to K State, mm-hmm. to because actually you guys uh, come and help to to develop and, and support this course. And I'd like to ask you about the relationship because sometimes we don't ask about the relationship between Mexico and the U.S., especially in the export market. So I think we, you can maybe elaborate on on that. How how much? I mean, we see we, get, we have some some folks from use a peak here. Um, how was the relationship? Who told you about come and and about and this particular course? Absolutely. Well, uh, this particular segment of the entire course is actually sponsored by the Illinois Checkoff Board. We are here uh, just supporting them. I mean, because we we value our relationship with Mexico as being very important. It's our biggest soybean market. It is also the biggest poultry market for for us going moving product south. And there's just a lot of reasons why we need to work so closely with uh, our Mexican counterparts. We have good relationship with uh, the staff in Mexico, the USPEAK staff, and so work closely with them. We've been down there several times to 
be involved in the earlier segments of this course. I mean, I think this is maybe the ninth segment or the final segment of everything. And so uh, we have been down and where they're just learning to, uh, in fact, I have a very sharp uh, carving knife that I was given while I was down there one time as we were learning to make the various cuts of, of the chicken breast, et cetera, and how they could get a better yield. And so all this becomes very important. And some of the segments, it's just a contest among students to see if they can come up with a new idea on what me, might be a fast food product, I guess would be, a, or just a, a product in a store um, using chicken in various forms. And so it, we try to help the entire market down there, not just a particular segment of it, but if there's a way that we can educate and make their life better as far as the companies that are processing, selling poultry, eggs, whatever it might be, then it's up to us to try to help them get better at that. Funny question. So how many times have you been to Mexico? Oh. Many, many, many. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, uh, probably on average, I'd make it down there over the course of time, a couple times a year, you know, to be involved in these courses. And there's other times when we just go down for fun too. But What's your favorite Mexican meal? I'm sorry? My favorite Mexican meal? Uh, hey, and, and if you say poultry tacos or chicken tacos, <laughs> that's not valid. So you, you, you have to shrimp tacos. <laughs> we also try to feed shrimp, so uh, soybeans. So, uh, you know, I like variety. Uh, you give me samples of a whole bunch of stuff, and I'll try it, and I'll probably go back and get more. One of my my favorite meals is is actually mole mole poblano, which is, I mean, you. You make it. I mean, you can do it with pork, but mainly with with, with chicken. So, uh -huh. we, we had a conversation uh, uh, recently with Jaime Gonzalez, uh, one of the consultants for USA Peak, and we're talking about the, the importance of of poultry in in the diet. I mean, it's a more um, accessible protein. protein. Mm -hmm. um, not that it's uh, more important than than other proteins like beef or pork, but it, it is. It's affordable. It is affordable. Yeah. More affordable, I should say. What was your background before uh, joining uh, the Kansas Soybean well, Commission? Um, or I, your, your background or some of your story before becoming a director of field services? Okay, well, as you know, Kansas State is the ag college. Well, I happen to go to the other university down the river here, Kansas University. And so I always like to joke with uh, my many bosses because I have an association board and then we have the commissioners that are all my bosses. I always like to joke with them and say, well, they're required to hire one because of federal equal opportunity. They have to have a Jayhawker on each <laughs> staff, you know, of a farm organization. So anyway, I am the token. But uh, over the years, I have uh, farmed. I, my dad had a farm and he it was part time for him because he flew for an airline. And so he was gone about half time. And I grew up working on the farm or going out and having fun out there, I guess. And then I farmed for a living for a while, became vice president of Kansas Farm Bureau and worked in a lot of policy development. And I thoroughly enjoyed that. After that, I worked for the state for a year in ag product development and found out I was not a good state employee. So uh, moved on from that, and that's when I joined Kansas Soybean Association and Commission as an employee there and have loved every minute of it. What's your take on, on soybean pricing? And maybe you can tell us about uh, how they might impact meat prices, and maybe in a, in a holistic approach, not maybe not very uh, specific, but maybe your take on that. Well, Farmers always enjoy higher prices, but with higher prices comes overproduction, which then drives down prices. I think, and this is my opinion, but I think right now we're in a period of, in time where the prices that we now enjoy, we being the farmers that raise the crops, probably will not go back to, let's say, a historical $10 soybean. Because I think, number one, the issues that are going on around the world that are 
playing with supply chain and, and you know, just supplies of food it itself are going to keep the price up. I think the fact that the price of inputs to grow those products, soybeans, corn, whatever, has climbed so dramatically that it's going to have to maintain a price. And I really think that overall the demand for protein is so great that it just will not be a surplus on the market in the future. I mean, there might be years when there's a little too much or, you know, but I really don't think we're just going to have the big surpluses that we used to have in the 80s, the 90s, whatever. I think we're past that. Somebody once in a meeting I was at said that by 2028, we will need 235 million more Big Macs to provide the protein demand that the world will have. That's a lot of Big Macs. Yeah, and you'll need more soybean for sure. That's right. So, well, th thank you for joining us uh, today. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and we're about to head out to uh, dinner and get some Kansan uh, beef? beef steak. So there you go. Sounds great. We look forward to hosting the group. Thank you for your support, and and we'll like to have you back sometime soon. Well, anytime. I'm always available.